Okay, welcome to chapter seven. We're gonna now we're gonna move to depreciable assets because it's a little more complex. Um Okay, so the outline of the chapter is intercompany profits and depreciable assets. Parent uses the cost method. Then we look at the equity method of reporting intercompany profits in depreciable assets. And remember the equity method is the parent on their separate entity books. And then we're going to do intercompany bond holdings. Actually, we're not going to do them. I'm going to introduce them. And they are not going to be testable. I will give you the filled in notes so that you can look. It's just with both inventory, land, and assets. Where are we? Here, right here. First, the profit or loss is unrealized, and then it's realized. With bond holdings, it's backwards. You realize the profit or loss first, and then you unrealize it later. And I'll, I'll give you a brief explanation of that. But I find it really messes students up who don't already have a really good grasp of uh, inventory land and now depreciable asset. So <clears throat> we're going to leave that for you to read on your own. So I said all that already. Let's start A then. So parents and subsidiaries often redistribute depreciable and non-depreciable assets among themselves. So for a variety of reasons, management, income tax, because remember income tax is calculated on the separate entity books, and corporate restructuring. So the transactions are recorded at the market value of the assets transferred. Thus the selling company will record a gain or loss on the sale, and the buying company will record the assets at the price it paid. Often higher but could be lower than the original cost of the assets. The key thing it's, is it's diff than the original cost. The gain or loss on intercompany asset so sales is unrealized to the group until the asset subsequently sold to buyer outside the group. So this is the same as chapter six. Everything we told in chapter six applies here. So we need the effect of the gain or loss to be eliminated in the consolidated financial statements. So we have to report as if the transaction between the companies have ever taken place. So we've done that with inventory, we've done that with land. Now we're going to talk about things like um, equipment. There are further adjustments to be considered in later periods including depreciation. So similar to the land where we had recording it every year till it's old, same with depreciable assets except we also have to add on depreciation or amortization. So the incremental depreciation is what it's called. The portion expense that is not based on historical cost, but from the sale of one to the other, parent to sub, downstream or sub to parent. So that has to be eliminated. So incremental depreciation. So, um, this incremental depreciation in the later periods may also be thought of as the realization of the intercompany gain or loss through the process of the value of the assets. So this is in the text that you can read. Um, as the value of the asset is depreciated by the buying company, a portion of the intercompany gain or loss is realized in that it doesn't have to be eliminated because it's been depreciated somewhat. Okay, so you're not taking the whole, let's say it was a gain of 6,000. It all was getting smaller because you eliminate part of it when you do the depreciation. I'll mention it as we go through. It's not a big deal, but if you are interested, read the text because they give a good example or a good uh, explanation. Of it. So, 
So moving on to page two. The depreciation expense remains on the consolidated financial statements after the elimination of that incremental is the amount that would have been recorded by the seller based on the original cost of the asset as if the intercompany sale had not occurred. Okay, So we did that with inventory, we did that with land, now we're going to do it with depreciable asset. Now, of course, along with adjusting the gain and depreciation expense, this is or loss, income tax expense, DIT, and accumulated amortization or depreciation have to be adjusted as well. So let's go through an example and you can see how it works. So January 1st, year five, parent purchased 90% of the sub for 17,400. On that date, the sub's common share balance was 9,000, retained earnings balance was 4,200. All the net assets of the sub were valued at fair value except for inventory, which was undervalued by 3333. Parent uses the cost method to account for its investment. So, additional information. Neither company declared dividends in year 5 or 6. Goodwill was impaired $40 in year 5, $10 in year 6. Inventory turnover is 5 times. Okay, we haven't run into that really. Why are they telling us inventory turnover? Well, what does inventory turnover mean? It means you will sell inventory from purchase to final sale five times per year. So are we going to sell this the next year? Yes. Okay, so remember we said we used FIFO? Well, we don't have to assume it when you're actually told inventory turnovers five times because obviously of inventory at the beginning, it's going to be sold because you go through all your inventory five times a year. Tax rate for both companies is 40%. January 5th, year five, the sub purchased equipment from an unrelated party, so from outside, for 3000 and immediately sold it to the parent for 5000 So do we have a gain or a loss? We have a gain of three to five, 2,000. Equipment has a useful life of five years, depreciated using the straight line method. Always use unless otherwise stated. Okay, we're gonna calculate the acquisition differential and goodwill. So I highly suggest you just take a quick second, put it on pause, calculate it yourself, see if you get it right. Actually do the acquisition differential and the amortization impairment schedule, and uh, then come on back. So we paid 17,100, and that was 90%. So we start with the implied value of the sub, which is 17,400 divided by 0.9, which is 19,333. Then we take away the sub's carrying value of net assets, the common shares tells you up here was 9,000 and retained earnings is 200. So that gives us 13,200 and an AD of 6133. Then we take away the fair value differential, FV minus CV, and it was all inventory and inventory was undervalued. So we've got to make inventory go up by 3333, which means it's a debit, so it's plus. 
So we get goodwill of 2800 Okay, so it should almost go that smoothly for you because um, this is a pretty simple goodwill calculation. So hopefully that made sense. Um, okay, so that's our goodwill. Now we need the amortization schedule and we want it for year five and year six and separate them. So if you haven't had a chance to do it, you wanted to see if your goodwill was right, just pause it now and come on back when you've got it done. So we've got a balance at acquisition and we've got inventory and goodwill. So moving from acquisition differential below it, we've got inventory at 3333 and goodwill at 2800. Year five. Well, during year five, we know with inventory it gets sold the next year. So it's zero. 2800 for goodwill. And on point two, it said goodwill was impaired $40 in year five. And that gives us 2760. So we've got 6133 to start with, 3373 in year, and 2760 at the end of year five. Now we need year six. Nothing's going on with inventory because it's sold. Up here, a number two, $10 in year six. And that means the balance at the end of year six is zero and twenty-seven fifty, twenty-seven fifty. So just to remind yourself, these columns go on the income statement. And these would be balance sheet. You know what years you're asked to do. So that should be pretty straightforward by now. Shouldn't be hard at all. Okay, now the next page is the new stuff. Stuff we covered at the end of chapter six, plus our in this chapter. So let's go to page three and we want to complete the unearned earned profit schedule or intercompany profit schedule or realized unrealized profit schedule. So everything is going to, everybody's going to call it something slightly different. So don't panic. Just remember there's lots of different names. Okay. Just before I do this, I'm going to start a new video so I don't get cut off.